Now, let's be honest, Chevrolet in the Philippines has had a really hard time, especially in the 90s and early 2000s. No thanks to lackluster models, unreliable durability, and lackluster after-sales service. But ever since the TCCI company took over the reins a few years ago, they've started to change that in a bit. But still, it's been an uphill climb for the company to put their best foot forward. And speaking of their best foot forward, the Chevrolet Tracker LT Redline seems to be their best yet. And I'm gonna tell you just why. What's going on guys, Roy Robles here from zigwheels.ph and we're gonna do a review of the Chevrolet Tracker LT Redline. Now, starting with the front end, it's exhibiting a lot of Camaro vibes, thanks to the shape of the headlamps and these sharp character lines on the hood. If you notice this badge right here, it exhibits a blacked out bow tie logo for Chevrolet. That's right, that's a bow tie right there. That's not a cross. It means that Chevrolet is going all out, all fancy with a black bow tie. You got this large gaping grille in front, it's really sporty, really nice. Like I said, it gives out Camaro vibes thanks to those headlamps, which are full LED. Plus you got those DRLs, which really look nice, especially when you're traveling in the daylight and really pops out on the road. All in all, it's a solid implementation, especially this nice piano black. You know how much I hate piano black, but it gives it an overall contrasting accent with this red line right there. This is the red line trim after all, so you're gonna see a lot of those red lines overall. Now heading to the side profile of the Chevrolet Tracker Redline, you'd see more of those Redline accents, especially on those 17 inch blacked out alloy wheels. Now, if you notice that red stripe there on the 17 inch alloy wheels seem to be kind of juvenile, but since I am a man child myself, I kind of like it. You got this sweeping character line that starts from the headlights all the way to the rear tail lamps. It's a nice implementation overall. And of course, since this is a crossover, you've got your black plastic cladding. Again, it's prerequisite. If you got a crossover, you got to have those black plastic claddings. Now you'd find more of the piano black trim at the back right here that seems to put Mozart or Beethoven to shame because they seem to really love their piano black. The only thing I find iffy about the rear end right here are those tail lamps. The tail lamps, they're, they're full LED, don't get me wrong, they're kind of nice, but it doesn't seem to fit the entire theme of the Chevrolet Tracker, especially how great the front end looks. You would expect more of those Camaro vibes transferring over to the back, but this is just plain old crossover SUV, but that's okay. They seem to have followed through with that thanks to this tracker badge right here, which is completely blacked out with, of course, this is a red line, red outline around the tracker badge right there. One thing I'd find odd, especially with these kinds of vehicles nowadays, you'd find the plate number right here at the bottom instead of where I want it to be right here up top, right below the badge. But that's okay, that's a design element that some companies seem to be pushing forward to for some reason, I don't know. You don't see the exhaust ports at the bottom right there, but that's fine because you do have your rear fog lamp. And let's open up the rear, shall we? So it's a manual tailgate, no power amenities here, but once you do open it up, it's pretty wide. Some other crossover SUVs have, for design's sake, had this really narrow opening, but for the Chevrolet Tracker, it's awfully wide. And once you do lift your stuff inside here, which by the way, it's really low, making things, putting things inside quite easy. Once you do have it inside, you got access to all this space. So as you can see, we got all our crap inside, our camera gear, our bags, no problems. I'd say two weeks worth of groceries won't be a problem for the Chevrolet Tracker. If you need even more space, you can fold those seats down. They fold 60-40 and you're good to go. Let's check out the inside. All right, so inside the Chevrolet Tracker, instantly you'd be greeted by a nicely sculpted dashboard right here. Now gone are the days where Chevrolet used to give you those multi-layered, multi-tiered dashboards that actually sometimes resemble a cockpit. This time around, they kept it simple, but this time you'd see some sort of netting material right up front that continues along the door panels, which is kind of <laughs> not for me, if you ask me, because it's kind of rough, especially with the feeling, but they followed through with it and at least made it up with these red stitching. But that's the thing about most Chevrolets actually, they have been trying their best in improving on their interior game. But to be honest, 
they're still not quite there yet. So inside you got these hard plastic scratchy materials on the dashboard, the door panels, even the center console, which to top it all off, you got this huge stack of piano black, which I really don't like. Just look at them funny. You're gonna have smudges on it no matter how hard you wipe it. It's still gonna have smudges no matter what you do. One of the biggest things I don't like about the shifter right here is that these shift indicators here, they don't light up, especially at night, which is gonna be hard for you to remember what gear you're in, but you will see them here on the digital display cluster. Speaking of display cluster, these gauge clusters here, uh, they're circular, they're simple, and you have red needles that especially look good at night but they're pretty old school for my taste. The fonts are actually too small, but for what you need them to be, at least they do the job. You've got this huge panoramic sunroof up top. Right, again, it's pretty simple inside. The buttons that you find on the automatic climate control uh, seem to have come from this GM sports bin. It seems to be out of place. But underneath here on this cubby hole, you got two USB ports, an aux jack, and a 12 volt socket. Now you do have your touchscreen infotainment display right here though. Now, the weird part about that is that it only has Apple CarPlay and no Android Auto. Now the reason behind that is that this Chevrolet tracker has been sourced from China and they don't have Google in China, they're banned there. So they don't make cars with Google products such as Android Auto. So that's the reason behind that. All right, so again, the interior game for the front passengers and the driver is pretty normal. Let's head over to the back and check how it's worked. So in the back right here, again, it's more of that normal theme. You don't get any toys whatsoever except for two USB ports, which brings up the tally of the Chevrolet Tracker to four USB ports. At least it's got that going for it. All right, this soft leather right here that you usually find in sneakers, it's pretty rough to the touch, and I don't think it's gonna last as long as most other soft touch leather materials out there, but at least it's got this red stitching, plus this gray strip in the middle that looks like denim, so that's got it going for it. Plus the rear passengers have this nice center armrest with two cup holders. One thing about space here is that because of that large panoramic sunroof, the headroom is pretty limited. See, if you I sit upright with my five foot ten and a half frame, my head definitely reaches up right here and bangs it up against the ceiling. But if I list lounge like so, put the center armrest down, it's a good place to be in. It's fine. You got a lot of leg room, by the way. Overall, it's a great place to be in in the back. But the one thing that I do love about these types of reviews is that I get to sit right here. So let's take this out for a drive and see how that goes. Now we're behind the wheel of the Chevrolet Tracker LT Redline. Now what can I say about the acceleration from that one liter three cylinder turbocharged engine? Most of the power it's getting is from the upper RPMs. So what I'm saying is that the torque actually is more linear than other turbocharged small cylinder cars out there. Speaking of displacement, this only has a one liter three cylinder engine that's turbocharged and it makes around 113 horsepower and 175 newton meters of torque. But because of the way that the torque's been mapped out, it feels more like a large displacement car than a turbocharged car. And I gotta say, I gotta give Chevrolet high marks on that one. Right, so powering the front wheels is a six-speed automatic transmission. You won't find any fancy CVTs or dual-clutch transmissions here, but I'm happy that a traditional torque converter is available on the Chevrolet, and it works fine. It's a joy to drive. It's smooth and certainly delivers the power, like I said, in a more linear manner than most. For suspension, you've got McPherson struts up front and a torsion bar in the rear. The suspension is built more for comfort rather than sportiness, so it's not gonna be as stiff of a drive inside. It can easily run through road imperfections without any hiccups, and your passengers will appreciate that. The downside of that comfort is once you hit a curve, like so, body roll is very evident in this crossover SUV. And road feel when you're steering definitely could use some work. You can barely feel the road at all. I mean, yeah. It looks like a very sporty car from the outside. It's just very sedate. So for fuel economy, the beauty about small displacement turbocharged cars, such as this one, is that you can be as fuel efficient as you want, depending on the situation. Now for this car, driving around the city in moderate to heavy traffic will net you around 
eight to nine kilometers per liter in the city. Now, opening it up on the highway, you can get 15 to 16 kilometers per liter, easy. Now, this car actually has automatic start-stop. So what that means is that once you hit traffic and you hit a standstill, the engine would automatically shut itself off without shutting down the electronics, such as air conditioning and all that. My problem with that is that it's kind of intrusive whenever you're driving, you can actually feel the engine shutting down and shutting off because it's a three cylinder engine. It's very rough when you're on the outside. So it's easy to just turn it off, no problems. For safety features, you got your standard kit. You got airbags, ABS with the electronic brake force distribution, but a few more extra bits is that you've got hill start assist. You also have traction control and you got a great high definition rear view camera here, as well as a rear parking sensor. The nice thing about the rear view camera of the Chevrolet Tracker is that whenever you got an obstacle near the car, it actually just doesn't just beep. It actually shows you what direction or what side the obstacle is going to be at. So it's pretty smart that way. So there you have it, folks. It's the Chevrolet Tracker. This time around, Chevrolet Philippines has went for the simple but functional yet wrapped in a sporty package and removing all the bells and whistles altogether. But do you think it's a solid enough car to take on the more powerful and more popular compact crossover SUVs out there? Well, here are three things that I don't like and like about this car. So first of all, it's the interior materials. Although this is packaged as a more premium kind of trim for the red line, the interior amenities are a bit of a letdown, but that's classic Chevrolet. It's more of a functional yet kind of scratchy, plasticky interior that kind of been, would have been better in my opinion. The second thing I don't like about the Chevrolet Tracker is the engine. I'm not saying it's a bad road car. I mean, on the road, on the highway, it's definitely a peppy player, but on idle, it's pretty rough. Standing on the outside, but in, of course in the inside as well, a lot of that noise, vibration and harshness really feels it, especially for the three cylinder engine. I know three cylinders are naturally rough, but it could have been a lot smoother. Now, the third thing I don't like about it is the safety package. Now, a lot of its competitors have 360 degree cameras, sensors all around it, but don't get me wrong. It's got two airbags, backup sensors and a backup camera. That's pretty up to the course for these types of vehicles. But like I said, there could have been a lot more. Now the things that I do like. Now, one thing that I love about the Chevrolet Tracker is that engine. Yes, I know I said it's one of the things that I don't like, but that's on idle. But once you go out on the road, it's pretty peppy. It loves to rev high and it's fuel efficient as well. Second thing that I love about the Chevrolet Tracker is its looks. I love how the Camaro-ish front end blends well with all those red trims. I know a lot of people might not like it and it's a very contentious point, but for my taste, it's definitely my cup of tea. Third thing that I love about the Chevrolet Tracker is the space. Now the sunroof might get a little bit in the way when it comes to headroom, but overall the leg room, the interior space is definitely good. I love how you can split the seats 60-40 and fit a lot more. And the rear hatch opening is definitely wide enough for all your large items. And that's it for our review of the Chevrolet Tracker. If you want to find the best prices for this car, head on over to zigwheels.ph and leave us a comment in the comment section down below and tell us if you think it has what it takes to take on the more popular, more powerful compact crossover SUVs out there. And while you're at it, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification icon so you won't miss any of our videos. This is Roy Robles from zigwheels.ph and I'll see you guys next time.